very good evening to all of you the president of world maritime university dr cleopatra today's uh, guest of honor professor mukherji deputy director general of uh, shipping government of india mr ash mohammad registrar maharashtra national university mumbai dr anil ji variyat my colleagues mr yashwardhan and all other colleagues and those dignitaries and participants who have joined this platform today for the inaugural of uh, sir c p shrivastava memorial lecture series in maritime law dear friends uh, maharashtra national university mumbai which was established in 2014 it is just a seventh year where we offer uh, ba llb honors courses uh, regular llm one year course and then yes other masters uh, degree programs and diploma courses as well along with that we have fourteen centers like center for mediation and research center for arbitration and research and the center of maritime and law and research in association with and supported by director general of shipping government of india at the outset i congratulate uh, the center for organizing such a and taking such initiative and organizing this uh, lecture series in an honor with a towering personality the doyen of maritime law not only in india who is internationally acclaimed one sir c p shrivastava as a the center of maritime law and research at maharashtra national law university mumbai which is rather the center not only meant to offer the specialization in llm but rather at the same time we intend to offer even some certificate courses some training programs in association with the director general of shipping government of india i must proudly say that it is one of its kind of initiatives in the learning of law in india where it epitomizes a symbiotic relationship between a regulatory institution like dg shipping and an academic institution dear friends uh, as all of us have gathered today with the limited ability to interact on virtual mode with the object of celebrating the life of a doyen and to give ourselves an opportunity to be inspired by his commendable work commendable efforts and deeds us we are really grateful thankful to dr cleopatra president of the world maritime university professor mukherji professor emeritus of maritime law delhi university and director general as well as deputy director of shipping government of india in joining us to pay tributes to sir sri p shrivastava as uh, many of us may not aware about that uh, he was a figure which was well regarded among the administrators and at the same time a well known steward as pointed out by his president world maritime university in maritime affairs for his unparalleled negotiating accomplishments any attempt to enlist his accomplishments would fall short and insufficient in front of sir sri p shrivastava's very towering personality together these attributes of sir sri p shrivastava makes it imperative for any maritime law learning institution to also look upon him as a revered figure and a fountain head from where the blessings and the well wishes are showered upon but at the same time we ought to know a bit about him who was he as when we are taking his name we are introduced and inaugurating the lecture series in his name sir sir sri p shrivastava was born on 8th july 1920 in india 
having done his ba as well as ma and llb then he joined the indian civil service he served also as a joint secretary to the then prime minister of india mr lal bahadur shastri from 1964 to 1966 he was the first chief executive of the shipping corporation of india at the same time as it was referred and pointed out that he was elected in the year 1974 as the secretary general international maritime organization un body and served till 1989 for consecutive years he played a very very pioneering role in establishment of international maritime academy in italy as well as international maritime law institute in malta also he was as referred the first chancellor of world maritime university who was appointed in the year 1983 to address pressing needs for maritime professionals particularly in the developing world developing countries in the year 1972 he was conferred the padma bhushan in 2005 he was conferred with honored with lal bahadur shastri national award for excellence in public administration and management by president apj abdul kalam and 2009 was conferred the second highest civilian award by the government of india padma vibhushan along with this he authored several books and two prominent books amongst all those books were lal bahadur one is on lal bahadur shastri and another one is on the corruption the enemy of india as and i would urge to those who are keen to know and his particular his particular his philosophy please have a glance of these two books but these are not the things since he was the founder chancellor of world maritime university as well as secretary general of international maritime organizations so and so forth we are honoring him and organizing the lecture series in his name rather along with this what is important for that that he was married to mrs nirmala shrivastava in the year 1947 a founder of the sahajoga a spiritual movement which believes and best on the experience which is called as self enlightenment or self realization as he said i quote sir c p shrivastava that his life is greatly influenced by his wife's movement and motivated that there is only one human god there is only one god and there is only one human family around the whole globe around the whole world us rather he called he said that it enables this movement enables this practice enables who himself has practiced till his last breath the practice helped him to transform himself from inner side that's what rather the self realization which believes in peace which believes in love and affection and so on and so forth rather i must hear at this juncture i am really fortunate to meet interact and spend some quality time with sir c p shrivastava at least on two occasions not only that to listen to him on several such occasions at least 7 to 10 occasions on different perspectives of whole life who believed in the humanity who believed in peace and prosperity and who believed in humanity as one religion and that's what rather the primary reason that we have named this lecture series after such a towering personality that is sir dr c p shrivastava as you know coming to the today's inaugural 
lecture topic that is maritime law and its prospects for India. I would refrain from going into all the details and all the aspects, rather some of them, most of them have been covered by, referred by the president and would leave these to our distinguished professor Mukherjee who has joined us all the way from China to enlighten us on the ensuring prospects of maritime law. What little I can say is that the India is perhaps the brightest among all others, all others, given the fact that India is steadily and rapidly emerging as a maritime hub now. I was always convinced about the significance of the ocean in the development of our nation. If civilizations have built up around the banks of rivers like Ganges in India, Thames in England, Volga in Russia, mighty nations are nurtured at the cost of at the coast of oceans. If rivers are a mark of civilization, then oceans are a reminder for their potential to become great powers. When I say great powers, I deliberately prefer to prefix power with great rather than with super. Ocean offers opportunities not only for trade but also for complementing the civilizational values, thereby acting as a route for the innocent passage of soft powers. At the same time, oceans can also churn out chaos, and our shared past is a testimony of fear of subjugation that was brought through oceans. Thanks to consensus builder people like Sir C.P. Srivastava sir, who thought his, who through his pen, painstaking efforts, hard work at IMO as the longest serving Secretary General has successfully facilitated the negotiation process of many maritime treaties. To tap the opportunities for nation building and civilizational scaling, we need to correspond our aspirations with a robust infrastructure support where the shipping industry can harness its potentials and contribute in the exercise of empowering the new India, now Bharat. This task is being successfully well undertaken by the Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways, Government of India. However, these efforts should also be matched by a set of laws which is resilient enough to respond to the challenges of the shipping industry and also to the technological advancements which secures sustainable shipping. Our Center for Maritime Law and Research seeks to foster cutting edge research in the study of maritime law where the needs of shipping industry gets legal currency and the maritime aspirations of India are being fulfilled. We are confident and we know well that the Director General of Shipping Government of India and its whole team lends a great support in this endeavor. We really intend to offer training programs, certificate programs, diploma courses, and if possible, even the degree programs either at graduate level or even at master's level in the area of maritime law and research. I know and uh, Mr. Riyash Muhammad would agree with me that we have received a proposal from World Maritime University a few months before or maybe a year before to have a kind of a tripartite association, Maharashtra National Law University Mumbai, Director General of Shipping and World Maritime University to offer some courses. Certainly with the help of DG Shipping as well as World Maritime University, we at our place, Maharashtra National Law University Mumbai, would like to take all the earnest efforts and steps to materialize, to realize this goal so that we can contribute into the development at national as well as international level. With this, once again, I congratulate the center and thank the president, World Maritime University, Dr. Cleopatra, 
Professor Mukherjee, Mr. Ash Mohammed, and all others for joining us on this great occasion. Thank you so much.